Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be finding the nth term of a sequence. We have the first few terms of the sequence as 3, 5, 9, 15, so on and so forth. So the sequence goes as follows. We start with the first term which is a1. We can call that a1 equals 3. And then we add 2 to get the second term. And then we add 4 to get the third one from the second one and then we add 6 so every time the number we add increases by 2 therefore we are always adding the next even number even though it's not explicitly stated or generally stated that's what the rule is so we're going to be finding the nth term of this sequence using the given terms and the rule obviously there are infinitely many sequences that you can write that start with these terms then they follow different rules but since I already told you how that goes this should be a unique sequence with a unique nth term. So here's how we're going to proceed. I'm going to write the relationship between the terms as follows. So I'm gonna write a sub 2 equals a sub 1 plus 2 so to get the second term we add 2 to get the third one from the second we add 4 to get the fourth from the third we add 6 and this is gonna continue let's see how we can write this in a more general form so I want to get a sub n which is the nth term from a sub n minus 1 all I need to do is add 2 times the quantity n minus 1 notice that we're adding 6 to a 3 which is 2 times 3 so that's how the rule goes but I'd like to write it in a nicer way so let's go ahead and take this expression and write this in a simpler or maybe better way so here's what I'm gonna do I'm going to write this as a difference so let's go ahead and write it as a sub 2 minus a sub 1 equals 2 a sub 3 minus a sub 2 equals 4 and then a sub 4 minus a sub 3 equals 6 and then this will continue and then and the nth term can be written as a sub n minus a sub n minus 1 equals 2 times the quantity n minus 1. Okay, so these are all the differences that we can write. Notice that on the left hand side we have the terms of the sequence. On the right hand side we have all the even numbers, pretty much 2 through 2 times the quantity n minus 1. So the one big advantage of writing it this way is we can just go ahead and add both sides of this equation. So we can add side by side and we're going to get something nice because a lot of terms are going to cancel out. Okay, so when we add, this is what happens. We get a2 minus a2, which is 0, obviously. We get a3 minus a3. So everything starting with a2 is going to cancel out with the next one like this. a4 is going to cancel out. And obviously, a sub n minus 1 is going to cancel out with the previous term or the previous difference, the first term of the previous difference, and so on and so forth. The only thing that's left from here is going to be a sub n minus a sub 1. So on the left hand side, we get a very, very simple difference. Great. And on the right hand side, we can write this as a sum for now. Let's go ahead and do that. And then I'd like to simplify this. And how can I do that? And also notice that a1 is equal to 3 because the first term of the sequence was given as 3 and that was a sub 1 as you know. So we're going to use that information here, replace a sub 1 with 3. So this gives me a sub n minus 3 equals the sum on the right hand side. Now notice that this sum can be, we can just factor out the 2 because if you ever have a sum of even numbers, we can always pull out a 2. I mean, I don't really encourage people to memorize separate formulas for all these things because if you just know one formula which is the Gauss sum I'll tell you a little bit about that uh, so we can just derive all the other ones from it so this is going to be 1 through n minus 1 and what is our Gauss sum formula let's go ahead and talk about that so if you have a formula for uh, let's say something like 1 plus 2 dot 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 all the way up to n this can be written as n times n plus 1 divided by 2 so we take the last term and then just add 1 to it multiply those two together they are basically consecutive integers and we divide by 2 uh, and we get something called 
triangular numbers because you can arrange these numbers in a triangular form, so on and so forth. There's a lot of things that we can talk about, but I want to keep it short. So this one is pretty much the same sum, but the last term is not n, it's n minus 1. So we're going to use the version where we replace n with n minus 1. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be n minus 1 multiplied by n divided by 2. Okay. The 2's cancel out. That gives us a n, a sub n minus 3 equals n squared minus n. And now we can just go ahead and add 3 to both sides and we get a sub n from here. Remember our goal was to get the nth term of the sequence and we did. Now, we can just go ahead and just for fun test it out. For example, uh, we can replace n with several different values. Let's go ahead and do that. For example, I can just go ahead and replace n with 1. That should give me a sub 1. Let's check it out. 1 squared minus 1 plus 3, and that is going to be 3. If you replace n with 2, you should get a sub 2, which is 2 squared minus 2 plus 3, and that will be a 5. And then if you replace n with 3, you should be getting a sub 3, which is 3 squared minus 3 plus 3, and obviously that's going to be 9. And if you look at the first three terms of our sequence, 3, 5, 9, so on and so forth, it's going to give us the same thing. Well, this is not just a proof, it's just verifying that our formula actually works. And obviously you can find any term since you have the formula for the nth term of this sequence. Alrighty. Is this a geometric sequence? No. Is this arithmetic? No. But it's kind of like a combination of these two things and it can be written as a quadratic equation. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care and bye-bye.